never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Now this grace I am fixed upon it Singing with the saints above Praise the Father, Son and Spirit Blessed fount of In the struggle, how I feel it daily now to slay my sin. Yet from what I do in heaven, hear thy praises, I'll begin. Here I trust my Lord and Savior, for by him this this far I've come, and I know by his good pleasure shall this fight be ever won. Jesus saw me when a stranger wandering from the ways of God, he to rescue me from death. So did spill his precious blood Of how great the cost of Calvary Mortal tongue can never tell Though a sinner he has bought me Words cannot express it To grace our greater debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness ever present Bind my wandering heart to me Oh, to wonder, Lord, I feel Prone to leave Just see thy lovely face clothed in blood washing me. How I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Quicken, Lord, thy great returning. Bring thy promises to pass. For I know. to do before uh, before church starts. You know, I'm wondering how many people are actually gonna make it today because how do you have church without people? I mean, 
Uh, they need to be here for us to for us to have church, right? You know, Easter Sunday is not the same without people. You just can't do church without them. I mean, that's a, oh wait a second, there they are. Good morning, church family. We, we hope, hope you have a blessed Easter. Easter. Wait a second, here's some more people. From our family to yours. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Good morning, Master Pico Park Church. Good morning. God is good. Oh, wait. You're here, too. Hey, good morning, church. Good morning, church family. Happy Easter from Petey and Mella. Oh, I'm glad you guys came. Blessings, blessings to everyone. Hope to see you soon. Keep safe. I'm going to read a reading from Romans 8, 38 to 40. You know, I'm short-winded, right? <laughs> I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears Amen. for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in the creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. That is, that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And have a blessed Easter, everybody. Felices Pascuas a todos en este día glorioso. Felices Pascuas para todos en la iglesia. Los amos. Happy Easter, everyone. And I'm glad that you made it here, too. Happy Easter.
Well, good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Day and welcome to our Easter gathering here. Uh, I hope that you are doing well. Uh, I am excited for today. When it comes to uh, when it comes to his Resurrection Sunday, uh, I just I love it. I, I love it because he is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So, uh, would you pray with me as we continue on with this service? Father, I thank you. I thank you for your love. I thank you that you are here with us. Lord, that a building is not the church, but it is your people. God, we are your church. Whether we're sitting at home, drinking our coffee, uh, rolled out of bed, or if we're dressed up, Lord, we are still here coming together. Whether it's in Long Island Pennsylvania, Oregon, or whatever state we're in and watching and being a part of this, we are your church. We are your people. Father, we say that we love you and need you. Lord, on this day, we pray that you would meet with us, that you would speak to us, and that you would change us. We open ourselves up to you, and it's in your holy name that we pray. And all God's children said, amen. So I have a couple of quick announcements uh, before we move on. I just wanted to thank everybody for, for joining us in, in our celebration service here for uh, Easter time, for Resurrection Day. Uh, I just wanted you to be aware of uh, a couple of things. The first thing, there were several families who had asked, listen, I want to continue um, to help and to give um, and, and, and to be a part of our church. And so we've made it available that there are two different ways that people can do it. If you feel like this is, this is a ministry you want to be behind and support, uh, we, we've opened up a Venmo account as well as uh, we have our, our mailer address with, this, with the secure box. So for those who want to continue to support this ministry in the midst of everything, I know we can't come together and take an offering, but we've made this available for you. And so I want to thank Jeremy for taking the time to put these slides together. But... We want you to know specifically what your money goes to. Like one of the things this year for Easter, we're, we're doing something significant and special. Part of our church's mission is to be connected locally and globally. And so locally, we see that there's a very real need going on within our community. I mean, this epidemic that's hit, it, it, it's significantly hurting us here in Long Island. And for those of you in the medical field, it's been rough. Countless nights that you're going to work and you're scared and, and, and you are pouring out your heart and your soul and your energy to caring for those who are sick and hurting. First off, I got to say thank you. Um, but we want to bless some of our hospitals. And so an opportunity came up that uh, we're going to be working with uh, one of the hospitals here. And we're starting it with one. And we are going to cover the meals for those who are working on one floor. Uh, we're going to take a special offering here. And uh, for those who are giving, what we're going to do is we're going to cover a meal for, for one whole floor. So doctors, nurses, uh, technicians, whoever's there. And so I've, I've been coordinating that with one of the local ho uh, hospitals. And the plan is just to bless them, to bless those who are blessing us, who are taking care of our sick and our hurting. And so if you want to be a part of that, you're welcome to give and to, to, to help, us, uh, help us love those who are working and serving in our community. So that's locally. Globally, we're connected with missionaries all over the world still who are out there serving God. And so every year we take an Easter offering to be a part of that. And, and part of the Easter offering will go to building up new churches, to working when uh, natural disasters hit. But in that special Easter offering, it also helps out our missionaries who are serving God. And so there's a missionary family called uh, Gabriel Benjamin. Him and his family are out in South Africa. And, and they are, they're going to share with us a, a, a wonderful report that shared with our church uh, yesterday. So this was from yesterday for Holy Saturday. So I want to welcome you and thank you. And uh, we're going to continue on with our service. We're hearing from Gabriel Benjamin and his family. Hope in Holy Saturday. Silence can be interpreted in many diverse ways. Silence can mean a broken relationship. Silence can mean the lack of response. Silence may also be interpreted as being resigned to helplessness. 
when it comes to the Holy Week of Resurrection, silence is simply a pause, a time where Jesus, the conquering King, went into hell, broke the back of Satan and shattered the sting of sin. We know the answer to the silence of Holy Saturday. The answer is simply this, that early on the morning of the first day of the week, the father came looking for his son. He rolled back the impossible and he breathed afresh upon his broken body. We are in lockdown here in South Africa. We are lying silently in the grey days of pandemic. Silence fills up the hallways of science laboratories around the world. How amazing that we can be of good courage. Even Silent Saturday has a limited number of hours. Soon at the appropriate time, Saturday's eerie silence will give way to the Father's voice on that early first day of the new week. He will call us out of our isolation. He will bring us back into life anew. Dear friends, sisters and brothers, we are all in silent Saturday of a national lockdown. Here, soldiers patrol our streets, but God's grace is still felt. God is with us. On Friday, the father stepped out from behind the curtain. And on Sunday, the son steps out from behind the rock. The God of eternity is most with us in these days. We are praying with you. We are praying for each church by name. The blood of Jesus still has efficacy for us today. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. To the only wise God be all glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. New York Metro District, Church of the Nazarene, we love you all. God is carrying you through this. We are praying for our leaders there. We are confident that our lives are in his hands. May the Lord bless you. Amen. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and there is only one foundation we believe, we believe in this broken generation. When all is dark, you help us see. Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe.
We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. Let's
Hey, thanks for helping me get this ready. My kids love Easter. <laughs> Who doesn't love Easter, am I right? Yeah, that's true. But if you think about it, leading up to that first Easter, Jesus had it pretty rough. Wow, I never really thought of that. <laughs> I wonder whatever happened to that guy. Well, you know, he, he died on the cross. You sure about that? Yeah. No, no, that's a different guy. I'm thinking of the Jesus that, uh, what's his last name? No, 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 no. It's the same guy. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. I just never connected the two together before. Jesus on a cross. I wonder whatever happened to that guy. Um, he, uh, he came back to life. Three days later. What? Yeah. Wait, we're still talking about Tomb Jesus. Yeah. That's the same guy? Yeah, yeah, he died on the cross for our sins. No, no, that's a different Jesus. No, 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 same one. Died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, came back to life, and now he sits at the right hand of God. Wait, cross Jesus is the same as the right hand of God Jesus? Yeah. Not separate Jesuses? There's no separate Jesuses. I just never put them all together before. No, it's still, it's still one guy. Wait, you understand what this means, don't you? One guy did all of that? I mean, that changes history, that changes everything. That is big. He deserves more than just jelly beans for his birthday. Wait, so the Easter Bunny is the no. same? So a couple years ago, uh, when I was a kid, I, uh, I could remember one Christmas where my family, uh, we were getting ready for, for this great day of celebrating. But, you know, like all kids, there were things that we were excited about. And for myself, I, I sat there and, and I continued to drop hints at my, uh, on my dad and mom uh, about what I really wanted. You know, I, I would even go so far as to beg and plead with them and saying, you know, this Christmas I wanted something special. I wanted something significant for me. And, and I was ready, I was, I was ready to, 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 to be a man. And, and so I, I wanted my very own mountain bike. You know, growing up in the city, you, you had BMX bikes and you were stuck to the road. But, but when we moved to Jersey, there was something about going into the woods on your own that just made you felt important, made you feel older. And so I continued to talk to them about, this is what I want. Well, I, I thought they got the hint because I, I remember that morning, I woke up early and ran down the stairs and as I was heading down I had so much hope and excitement and I was I knew that I was going to get that bike I knew it was going to be sitting there and so as I turned the corner and looked at the tree I noticed there wasn't a gift that was wrapped the size of a bike uh, actually there were less gifts under the tree than normal. And so all that excitement and joy that I had to kind of just moved away. And, and in its place, it was like that ungrateful preteen spirit, you know, the kind you get when you just don't get what you want, just kind of moved in as a very sour attitude. And as I looked at the presents, I, I just felt like disappointed. You know, my, my folks came down and they saw me there and, and they saw my sister and, and my dad tried to lift my spirits a little bit and encouraged us to open all the gifts. And I did, reluctantly. Well, I got to the last one and it was this old Sega uh, Batman video game and my dad thought it was the greatest thing. He says, Eddie, you should be excited for what you got. Just be a little grateful. Look, this is a great game. You like video games? I'm like, yeah, I do, I do. But it wasn't my bike. There's a sense of disappointment that happened there. 
as he looked at me, he said, let's, let's go downstairs. Let's just hang out, us two. We'll play it. So I picked up the game and made my way down towards the basement where we had our TV. And as I went down those stairs, turned on the light and turned the corner, there in front of our old TV was this big, beautiful silver mountain bike. And that, that depressed preteen kid all of a sudden uh, uh, booked it out of the room and I ran to that bike and it was so exciting. And my dad looked at me with, with f like this, this smile. He was excited that I was excited. But from, from the tree to the basement, from, from the point of disappointment to the point of excitement, that journey is, it can be long sometimes. You, you know, there's times where life can be dark and, and it feels like there's no hope. It's as if there's, there's nothing around us going our way and you can be walking around in the midst of, of a dark moment and, and, and you want a little bit of hope, but it's, it's hard to hold on to because everything feels like it's not going your way. In, in the ancient texts, there's a uh, story of three women who hung around and followed Jesus as he traveled uh, throughout Israel. Specifically, these three women, they had all been affected by him some way, shape, or form. They, you know, whether they were forgiven by him, whether one of them, her kids followed them, but, but they were all touched by his ministry. He was supposed to be this Messiah. He was the one who was going to set them free. They longed for hope, and he gave it to them. And then... And then that awful night happened where Jesus was led to the crucifixion. And it was there that hope disappeared. It was as if in the darkness, any ounce of joy that they had, any ounce of hope that this man would bring a revolution to their culture, to their people, to their lives, it was gone. Have you ever had moments like that where you felt as if the clouds came in and life continued to get worse and worse. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine what it would have been like for them. Seeing their Messiah on a cross and eventually dying, laying there. You know, just a few days ago, we, we had our Good Friday service and we talked about how horrendous that crucifixion scene was and, and it was bleak and miserable and so as his disciples witnessed this they all kind of just scattered now what was interesting about these three women and I bring them up because they still they still loved him and as part of the customs, they decided they wanted to go to his burial site where he was placed within this tomb. And, and there was this huge stone uh, uh, covering the tomb, sealing him in. And they were going to go and prepare his body with beautiful perfume. Well, they, they planned and prepared on Saturday and left early on a Sunday morning like this. And so it was dark out as they started their journey. And, and as they got closer and closer to the tomb, it, it actually became light. The, the sun was rising early that morning. And, and the Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Salome and Mary, the mother of James, went out and purchased the burial spices so that they could anoint Jesus's body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, 
they went to the tomb. And on the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of this tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and they saw that the stone, which, they, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. You know, if these women remembered what Jesus had said, just like the disciples would have remembered, they would have remembered that leading up to this point, he had talked about that he was going to go through hell and back. He was going to experience one of the darkest moments in his life. And every time when he was asked about this, as it got closer and closer, he made this reference that you can destroy this temple, but in three days it will rise again. You know, he said that the Son of Man had to experience the pain and the torture. He was going to be handed over, but he will rise again. And so as they saw the tomb, I wonder if echoes of his words started to come back to him, started to come back to them. I wondered if if they remembered that this was the same man that spoke to waves and calmed them, that this was the same man that held in his arms men with these infectious diseases and healed them. This was the same man that took in little children and loved on them. This was the same man that raised his best friend from the dead. But he was dead. And, and how, can, how can you raise yourself? How can you heal yourself? How can you demonstrate? There, there really isn't that kind of power out there. And so as they walked a little bit closer into the tomb, they were in shock. They were expecting a dead body, and they didn't get that. You know, according to this scripture in the Gospel of Mark, it says that when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And the women were shocked, but, but the angels said, don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, and he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered. And they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. You know, the angel reminded them that Jesus already told you this was going to happen. He said that he would experience and taste death, that that, that was something he was going to go through. And it had to happen so that this day could come. You know, there's times where I, uh, I like to go outside when, when I go for a run. And early in the mornings, I, I, I really enjoy it because you start your run off when it's dark and it's quiet and there's nobody around. And the longer you go, it, it's the sun starts to peek its way through the clouds. And no matter how dark it is at night, I, I never question whether or not the sun is going to come up. I know it is. I know that the sun will rise. I know that eventually I will be sitting in the light. I know that it's going to happen. That was the joy and the promise given to us on resurrection. You know, we come together on Easter morning to celebrate something that had happened. And and we think, you know, my life is bleak and, and I'm experiencing some pretty dark days. And Jesus is saying, listen, I don't care how dark you think it is now. 
the sun will rise. This too will pass. You will experience the light of day once again and you can rest in the hope and the confidence that there is a God who will walk you through this. The resurrection proved something that people have longed for, that there is a God who is greater than even death, that you could trust him. That the resurrection announced something supernaturally great, that it scared these women. That Jesus was who he said he was. That he is who he said he is. He is the Messiah. And when they witnessed this, they celebrated. It was as if all that joy that had disappeared from disappointment had returned. It flooded back into them and they could look and see early that Sunday morning that their Messiah was risen. And they continue to say, he is risen, he is risen. Ah, he's risen indeed. If you're sitting here this morning celebrating with us this Easter service during this time, this season, and and you're wondering, man, life is pretty bleak at this time. I want you to be filled with joy. I want you to hold on to hope. I want you to long for that sunrise that will come. The sun will rise again. It will burst through those clouds that you're experiencing and God will say, I have risen. Jesus is worthy of our celebration. And so I pray and hope that this Easter that you would be excited and filled with that same joy and amazement and wonder that those women experience and you could go from this place and say, He is risen, He is risen, He's risen indeed. God bless. Covered in sin